oak door from Holmes. So it won't cheap, so no pressure. I haven't used my rouse jig only about five, six times maybe. But uh, we'll give it a go. Fortunate part is when I bought this, I didn't realise there were two different types. So I bought the one, the, the old one. So you have to put it together with an Allen key, and there is another one that you just sort of, there's sort of a couple of knobs on the sides that you twist together. And from, by all accounts, they're a little bit better because I've got to put a space, I'm blocking here now with my hinge, whatever hinge I use, but on the other ones there's a stepped shoulder. So you set your hinge and there's a stepped shoulder now for your collet. So yeah, this is, is good, but I think I'll have to uh, get the next one, not the other one, I think. Because it just makes it easier, in my opinion, if you're doing new doors on old hinge holes in a frame, you can set this to your frame with your stepped collet and your, your spacer, and then you can um, transfer it to your new door. Whereas with this one, you have to try and hold the packer on and, and halve it. And, no, it's rubbish. It's rubbish. The only downside to using this with a finished door is that you normally hold the hinge jig on with these bradles, pointed bradles, knocked into the end. So you're going to have a bit of a, a bit of a hole in the end of your door. But it's on the hinge side and in this instance it, it needs a bit of something on the edge anyway, it's quite rough, it needs sanding anyway, so a bit of touch-up paint will uh, sort that out. One of those pots when we know we use get one of those, that'd be fine. Like I saw on the newer one, rather than doing this, there's a like a knob that you turn sort of in the body of the thing there, so it's much better. Right, so the first thing you have to do is uh, set your hinge first. So you get your hinge pack. This is from Holmes, it's, it's not a bad one in this instance. Sometimes Holmes can be a bit cheap, but this seems okay. And there's a line there that you can probably see here. And I'm going to do this without reading the instructions and then I'm have to get rid of all this footage because I might be wrong. But let me get this the right way. So you get this. And you set this leaf, one of your leaves of your of that, against it, sit it against it. And then this line that's on here, you line it up with that part of your hinge, the inside of your knuckle. Which, as it is, that's good because I must have used these before. But then these things are very much of a muchness. So the main body points towards you is the same way as the knuckle of your hinge. So, in other words, oh, this will open that way as I look at it, orientated not in the hole. But I will check. Looks about right. Check your sizes. Mine should still be set at six inches and nine inches. Put in the ore packer, which is this little two mil packer, which half of that is the, is the thickness of your um, collet in your router. So the double thickness that allows for when you're routing, it allows you to route the, the size out. And you just put that in there like that, put your hinge against it and tighten these down. Um, I'm only going to put two on this because these are ball bearing hinges and they're fine. I thought it might have three, but they are, they are the good hinges, so I'm happy with that. Right. Routers, I'm not going to get into whose, whose routers are best and who's got a better one than that one, but I've got a Milwaukee one and it comes with this space that you clip your router into, it comes with a smaller one, a handheld one, and it comes with the fences and everything else, and I haven't been able to fault it yet. So, I'm sticking to this one, I like this one, it's a nice little router. I have actually just bought the 36 volt high coke as well, um, which is the first, I'll stand corrected, but I'm aware it's the first half inch battery operated router and it's a great piece of kit. Right, so I've put my uh, hinge dig on the door, make sure the hinge locators are against the door, make sure this plate is against the top of the door, check again, I've got the right orientation, check again that I'm cutting the right side out on the hinges. I'll then set this depth then, this depth 
it by pu putting that on there and plunging it down so that blade touches the door. Pull this net this back now. The thick put the, the that on the on the stop there and clamp your stop against it like that so it holds it and then tighten it off again. So now what that's done now is when it was zero that's now set the thickness of this higher. So I'll pull that out. So there if you can see on the camera, I'll try and see if I can. There's a gap there now between that and that this stop. So when I plunge that down now, it'll only plunge in further into the door at the thickness of that, which is what you want to achieve. So I'll put the battery in and we'll drill the hinges out. Drill, right the hinges out. There's your hinge hole. I'll go in that again because I did it one handed, nice and steady. But there's your hinge hole, and you get a corner chisel to take out the round bits. So I'll repeat that down the bottom there. Get the uh, corner chisel out, and we'll get the hinges fixed. And then this comes off this frame, and then Sam again clips onto that frame there. Not adjusting anything other than that plate gets straightened, so you can sit it against the top of your frame. You put your knuckles against the the same knuckle side again. Your hinge stops. And you're out it out. One thing I need to point it out is that I didn't do when I was trying to film it. Luckily, I one handed anyway. You must plunge your, de your depth, your blade, that extra thickness. Or it was set the paint off. And I thought, why is the hinge not working? Or it doesn't look deep enough. So well, that's all I did. I just plunged it to the thickness like I showed you. And it works fine. So, corner chisel. So all you've got to do is put this in nice and steady. Make sure you get it nice and square before you hit it and it's upright and give it one sharp blow. And that's what it does, like that. Of course, get it the right way around, obviously. There we go. Same again. Make sure it's square and upright and tight to the to the hinge, hinge hole, so it doesn't if you did it, you can hold it on the swift and then you'd get it wrong. It wouldn't look right. That's that. And then, hopefully, if you've done it right, he says, and I haven't tried it yet, let's hope so. That should go in there nice and tight. There we go. So, I'll get the uh, ones on the frame done now. And then we'll get the whole door swinging, hopefully, for the end of the day. Whole centre in drill bit. Get one if you're doing these. Makes life a hell of a lot easier. You take, put the door in the hole and take the hinges past the rebate. Make sure it's as upright as you can. 
and get your screw ready. And then just tilt, hold on to your fingers, tilt your door, your hinge, your door then, the top of your door, that way. And then push your hinge into the hole, which is what I've just done. Now don't do it all the way, because what you want to do is you want to pick the hinge up first and put the bottom one in before it goes fully weighted on the top hinge. So do the same again, hold it, put it on enough just to hold the hinge in place so it doesn't come out. Set your screw again, pick your door up, or a pin or a door lifter, which I've done it this way for years. So, so pick your door up, push your hinge and it's rebated, it should hold itself anyway. When you've done that, make sure you pull this set yourself, pull your door in, your hinge rebate, and that's it. Finish your screws off. And that's it done. There we go. As always, hope you've enjoyed this episode. Don't forget the uh, like button and the notification bell ready for the next episode. Harborn's going really well. Plaster out is there on Monday. Wonderful heating was fitted today. So it's all going to Harborn. Thanks for watching.